So Christopher Pine there pushing the independent public schools agenda. Well, here to discuss that and other issues of the day, a Liberal Senator, Dean Smith, in Perth, and Labor MP Nick Champion in Sydney. Dean Smith, if we can start with you, uh, Western Australia, as Christopher Pine pointed out, does have uh, quite a large number of independent public schools, presumably because they work for Western Australia and its vast geography. What says they will work everywhere else as well? Well, the Education Minister, Chris Pine, has quietly wrought, pointed out the fact that, you know, all the evidence, all the research does point to the fact that giving schools greater autonomy does lead to better outcomes. Uh, in Western Australia, it's more than a theoretical exercise. You know, we have been living with the practical experience of independent schools for some time. And almost a third of West Australian government schools are, in, act in actual fact, independent schools. And what our own research is demonstrating is that these lead to greater autonomy, greater principal and school community control and of course ultimately better education outcomes for students. Uh, this is something this is, this is something that has already been endorsed, already been endorsed uh, by Labor. We have Chris Bowen talking about it in his recent book, Supporting Independent Schools. We had Julia Gillard under her st stewardship. We had pilot programs in New South Wales schools. This is a great way for Labor to kick off the new parliamentary year and offer bipartisan support for what is a great student outcome. Well, Nick Champion, let's uh, cue you in right there. What is Labor's position, uh, particularly, I suppose, into the, uh, the general principle of, of uh, uh, independent public schools, if not the $70 million, which we can discuss in a moment? Well, look, I think uh, if, if you look at today's announcement, um, the way it was billed in the papers is uh, some sort of reduction in union power, some sort of assault on trade unionism in the country. And this is a government that uh, thinks it's in the middle of the crucible. Uh, it's engaging in witch hunts in nearly every uh, area of public policy making it can. And that's the concern. They call for bipartisanship today, but uh, their opening salvo on this issue is about dividing the community, about having witch hunts. Nobody's got any problems with principals having uh, the power to run schools. Nobody's got anybody, any problems with principals, you know, having uh, implementing effective strategies in their schools. But they've also got to have the resources uh, and I guess they've also got to have the support of the community. Would you uh, acknowledge that their chances of uh, driving this agenda uh, may increase given the political hue of Australia and the, uh, the further state elections that are going to be held in the next couple of months? They're, they're finding a fairly like-minded crowd among uh, premiers and chief ministers, aren't they? Well, look, that may be so, but th these sorts of programs were tried in the early 90s in South Australia and, and weren't a great success. It depends very much on the community and the resources that community has as to whether or not uh, there's uh, an appetite or an ability to run an independent school. So it, it will be horses for courses. We're not going to have a blanket sort of opposition uh, to communities who want to do this, but or to principals who, who want the power and have the management skills uh, to run their own school. But I, I have seen it uh, on occasion uh, go uh, badly wrong, and we need to have a system that's robust, that works for the whole nation, uh, and works for those communities that um, maybe don't have the resources and expertise well, uh, and Smith, instead need resources. You only have the same pool of teachers to, uh, to hire and, and fire here. Why why does it work better or is it that some principles will get the best and the rest have to make do? Well, what we know is that giving autonomy back to school principals allows them to make decisions in their own school communities that better reflect some of those local conditions. Uh, what we also know is that teachers do like to be empowered, uh, given greater authority over their classrooms, uh, given greater authority about how they conduct their school environments. Uh, the evidence is matched by the practical experience, particularly in Western Australia. And I think it's important, I think it's important that given the fact that other Labor jurisdictions or other Labor Party people have endorsed this proposal, I think a very, very powerful first step is to give it the benefit of the doubt, because it is proven on the ground, it is proven in the research, to support giving greater autonomy to school principals and school communities. All right, Nick Champion, you've got your leader going to SPC Ardmona today and uh, Holden, of course, played out as Holden played out in, in your state. Why should uh, Coca-Cola Amatil or a subsidiary of it get uh, taxpayer money when, let's face it, it's harder to come by for other industries? 
Well, look, I think what we're seeing about the Abbott government on the jobs record is a pretty dismal one. They've blocked investment in Grain Corp. They've, uh, you know, chased Holden out of the country. Uh, they've refused to give uh, SPC a grant to upgrade their factory, a very important factory for this regional community. And, uh, you know, they've declared, really declared war on Shepparton, the Abbott government, and they're risking thousands of jobs in, you know, Industries which have, you know, traditionally supported conservative politicians. Um, y if you're a farmer in Shepparton or in that in that region, you'd be terribly worried. This is Australia's last fruit manufacturer. We know they've been, uh, you know, uh, had serious problems with overseas dumping. They've had hyper competition, very a great deal of difficulty exporting because of the dollar. Very similar problems to the car industry is facing, and many other industries are facing. They're temporary problems, and instead we see a government that refuses to help them, and then you know, frankly, goes after the company, denigrates it as a multinational. We see the same sort of pattern of behaviour with Holdens. We see a government that's going after workers, uh, you know. Let's um, ask basically Smith, uh, Dean Smith, are you comfortable with the, the new paradigm here or what the government's calling a defining point in industry policy? Uh, what if closures arose in Perth? Well, Nick Champion is half correct. Uh, it is clear that the high Australian dollar, uh, the competitiveness of the global imports are changing the face of Australian manufacturing. No one can get away from that particular fact. But it is wrong, it is wrong then to say that government must be the first point of call for every industry group or for every corporation. And in the case of SPC Armona, it's very, very clear that Coca-Cola Amatel can do more to support workers in the Shepparton area. So the government's position is that the first responsibility sits with owners of businesses, and I might add, with the trade union movement to make sure that workers are getting fair and reasonable benefits. Now, of course, the situation in Western Australia is a powerful one. If a West Australian mining company was to ask the government for a subsidy, I'm sure the unanimous voice of Australian taxpayers would be that that is unreasonable. All right. So what we have to look at here is case by case, case by case situations across the Australian manufacturing industry. All right, we'll bring in the industrial argument there, Nick Champion. Not so much to do with SPC Ardmona, but uh, as I mentioned earlier, the funding disclosures are out now. Two million dollars, it says, from the CFMEU to the Labor Party. Is that a problem given the construction union stories that are rattling around at the moment? Oh, look, I don't think so. Look, these are long-standing relationships that have occurred in Australian politics for a long time. People like uh, the fact that Labor is connected to the working men and women of this country and they know the union movement is bigger uh, than any one individual. It's, a, it's been a movement that's done a, a great many good things for but Australia. But you don't see and collateral been very loyal damage to arising from some of those revelations, well, particularly well, if there is a royal commission? Well, inevitably those questions get asked, but if you look to you know, the grand history of Australia and, and our union movement, it's a good one. It's one of loyalty to the country and loyalty to the idea uh, behind Australia, the idea of a fair go. So I don't think there's any problems with that. Um, there may be uh, a few bad apples who are pursued by police, who are dealt with by courts, uh, and that's the way, uh, you know, that this country operates. Uh, we have the presumption of innocence. Uh, we have police and courts to deal with people who have broken the law. But Senator Smith, from the Coalition's point of view, this would be a very uh, tempting argument to mount, wouldn't it? That a, uh, a Royal Commission should be held, if only to try and uh, get the Labor Party's name caught up in it? Well, you don't have to be Sherlock Holmes to realise that the problem in the Australian conduction, construction industry, all the evidence clearly supports to that. The government will do the right thing, look at the evidence and make a judgement about what is the best way to deal with that. But Nick's suggestion that trade unions and the Australian labour movement are looking after the interests of Australian workers is a bit of a far stretch. Um, we have seen consistently now the Australian Labour Party looking after its interests, uh, the interests of a few people people in the Australian union movement at the expense of Australian workers. Uh, what, what the AEC returns demonstrate today is that the funding of the Australian Labor Party is heavily dependent on the Australian trade union movement. And what some about of those tobacco is, payments and some of, and to the coalition as well? Well, I think the view would be that if, if, if a product is legal, if a product is available to consumers, then there shouldn't be any prohibition on them participating in uh, funding political parties. But 
but should the Liberal Party organisation make a decision that for whatever reason it doesn't want to accept the money of big tobacco companies or other companies or other donors, that's absolutely up to them. But the core question here is, the core question for Bill Shorten and Nick Champion as we start 2014, what is the true extent of the links and ownership of the union movement and the Australian Party, All right, uh, and Liberal the Australian Senator Labor Party? That's Dean an important Smith. question. I think you put that question and made the point. Thank you. And earlier to Labor MP Nick Champion, we'll leave it.